Warning, the following content may be uncomfortable for some individuals. Viewer discretion is advised. Everything up to this point seems like a blur. All I can remember is heading on a road trip to clear my head. As sometimes, you just need to get away from it all. As for what I'm trying to get away from, I can't recall. I just remember needing a road trip to nowhere. I found myself driving through the mountain passes. A blanket of fog was forming around and closing in. The moment itself seemed calm, yet mysterious. The sudden surprise was that I didn't expect someone would be walking in the middle of the road, doing the best I could to avoid hitting the person. I had veered off the road and found myself slamming into a tree. I'm not sure of how many hours I was out sitting in the wreckage of my car. I came to disoriented as my head was killing me. I checked the glove box and found a flashlight. The battery seemed to be good still. I made my way out of my car. I pulled my phone out of my pocket. No signal and the phone screen was cracked. Shit. There goes plan A, I sighed. Heading towards the trunk, I looked inside and found some road flares. Headed back to the driver's seat, looking around for a piece of paper and a pen. I wrote my name and number, found little scraps of tape. I put it on the driver's side window. I grabbed the flares and the flashlight. I made my way out of the ditch and back on the road, looking around the fog was thicker, and I could barely see anything in front of me. I activated the flares. I dropped the flares by the side of the road, and started walking in the direction I assumed was right. The fog had a different feeling now. Instead of it feeling calm and mysterious, like before, it was feeling more eerie and ominous. I couldn't help but shake this feeling that I was being watched, or followed. Every so often, I was thinking my flashlight was shining on something reflective. But what could be reflective out here? Maybe it's a group of abnormally bright fireflies. They were keeping pace with me for a time, and then vanished. I have no idea how long I've been walking. The fog started to clear up a bit. In front of me, I could see the outline of something just a little ways ahead. Once I got closer to it, I could tell it was a sign. Welcome to Medulla. Where the home is where the heart is. Population? Scratched out. I took this as a good sign as I could head into town, get some help with my car, and be on my way. The fog was clearing up a bit more as I was heading into town. This was great as the batteries in the flashlight were starting to die, having to smack the flashlight to keep it from flickering. I happened to spot a payphone across the street. I made my way towards it, and once I got to it, I was rummaging through my pockets to find some change. I picked up the receiver and heard nothing but a dead signal. Frustrated, I took the receiver and proceeded to beat the hell out of the phone. Fuck! 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 God damn it! I exclaimed. I took a moment to calm down as nothing was going to plan. I figured heading further into town, someone might be able to help me. It was strange walking by the buildings. They were either run down or boarded up. I was beginning to doubt if anyone still lived here in the middle of the street, there was a figure standing there with their back turned away from me. They had a light source coming from their head. Must have been, you know, one of those headlights. I started to approach them to see if they could help. Hey, excuse me, do you think... I paused, for as soon as I said something to them, they twitched unnervingly. Slowly turning towards me, I realized that the light wasn't coming from a flashlight, but it was coming from their eyes. I could hear my heart pounding in my ears as 
I stood there frozen in fear. They began to open their mouth, and in doing so, a blinding light appeared, and the most horrifying scream filled the air. I was starting to back away, dropping my flashlight, and turned to run in any direction. It didn't matter which. While running, I could hear more of those screams in the distance. I ran into a building that wasn't boarded up, jumping over the counter, and hid in a small spot underneath. I could hear the footsteps and see the light closing in. They stopped at the counter, and I could see the light moving around. You can't hide in the shadows when what you've done is thrown into the light, they snarled. I could see the light disappear, as well as hearing the footsteps fade away. I waited a bit before crawling out from underneath. I looked around, trying to find anything I could use to defend myself against whatever the hell those people are, while also trying to keep quiet, as I don't know if any of them are still around. I found a door, and thought maybe I could find something useful in there. I opened the door, thankfully it didn't make that much sound, just barely a squeak. I went in, and was feeling around for a light switch. I found it, and turned to close the door behind me. I flipped the switch, and turned to my horror. I couldn't believe what was in front of me. No, 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 no. Uh, how are you here? I cried. I have no idea how she was here, but there she was, chains suspending her in place within the room, her eyes staring at me, those cold, dead eyes. I slowly made my way to her, still not wanting to believe that she was here. I started to tear up as my arm reached out towards her face. My fingertips brushed along her cheek of her cold, clammy flesh. I'm sorry, I said softly. I heard one of the chains drop, and my head darted to where I heard it. Nothing looked out of the ordinary, but then again, I don't know what's normal in this place. Looking back at her, I couldn't think of what else to say. In the blink of an eye, one of her arms moved, and her hand quickly gripped my neck. Those cold eyes of hers stared down at me with so much anger. For the life of me, I couldn't pry off her hand away from my neck. Fighting a losing battle, as I was beginning to lose consciousness, as my eyes were rolling to the back of my skull. In a quick jolt, my eyes shot forward as my upper body leaned upward. My eyes began darting around the room, till I realized I was safe. It was nothing more but a nightmare, but something about it felt so real. I made my way to the front door to get some fresh air. I opened the door and leaned on the door frame, closing my eyes and taking in a big breath of that morning dew smell. Opening my eyes, I could see that it was a foggy day. Something out of the corner of my eye caught my attention. On the door, only two words written in what could possibly be blood. Welcome home. I fell to my knees confused on what was happening. Then I heard that god-awful screaming again, closing in. I closed my eyes as I could hear my heart pounding in my head, just like I could hear their footsteps approaching. Then, strangely enough, Everything sounded so quiet. I opened my eyes and looked around to find myself sitting in my car. There was no fog, so I took that as a good sign. I looked at the dashboard and found a picture. It was a picture of the woman in that town. The difference was, in the photograph, she was smiling and seemed so full of life. But a single picture can't tell you everything about a person. Everyone has their demons. The things in the shadows that no one else sees. I did the best I could to help her. Helped her laugh for joy when she felt like drowning in tears. Loved her deeply when there were days when she felt like she couldn't love herself. Held 
her tight when she felt like the world was going to swallow her whole. I wanted to do something special for her one day. A day that she would remember, but it turned into a day I would never forget. I had the biggest smile on my face as I had a present for her, something to make up for the rough week she was having. I went into our little apartment, a place just big enough for the two of us. I walked around looking for her, as she would get off work a few hours before me. Hey babe, I called with happiness in my voice. Hey honey, where are you, huh? I gasped. In utter shock, I dropped my gift for her, as I felt like my heart shattered into pieces. There she was, hanging in the kitchen, with her wrist slit just in case hanging from the rope didn't work. I keep thinking of what I could have said or done to have her stay here with me. Guilt has a way of tearing you apart and destroying you from the inside out. Looking around now, there was no other cars in sight. I glanced over to the passenger seat, and sitting in that seat was a gun. I reached for it and placed the photo back on the dashboard. Checking the gun over, it was loaded and safety was off. I placed the barrel of the gun to the side of my head. I looked at the photograph and closed my eyes, hoping that in some way, if I do this, she'll be on the other side waiting for me, telling me just two words, for all I want to hear are those two words from her lips. Welcome home.